Welcome to My Life, Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson, a journey into the deepest teachings of Torah and their application to our personal, emotional, and psychological lives. A good tavoch, a good week. We continue our journey in Tanya. This program is brought to you by Rena Lights LLC, and it is an honor and a loving memory of Rabbi Yosef Halevi Weinberg, Rabbi Moshe Pinchas Akoyan Katz, and it's also an honor of Rabbi Zevi Cheskel and um, Risha Katz for many healthy, long years. Let us sum up what we've been learning last week and then continue on. We are covering now the Hagdomas HaMalakit. This is the compilers forward, as the Alter Rebbe, the author of Tanya, calls it Hagdomas HaMalakit. It's a forward to the entire Tanya. But as we've seen and we shall see, it's much more than a forward. It actually gives us a tremendous insight into how best to find moral and spiritual guidance in our lives. And of course, there are two possibilities, getting personal advice from a mentor or reading it and learning it in a book, in a sefer. And the Alter Rebbe, keenly sensitive to both these elements, addresses it in a very comprehensive way. So what we've learned so far from the outset, the Alter Rebbe says, I'm quite aware, as he puts it, uh, the statement that is known among people, maragli bapuma, which means a common attitude, is that listening to words of moral advice from a mentor, and in this case he's referring to chassidim, listening to the Alter Rebbe, going into Yechidah's private audience, is not the same as seeing and reading them in books. And he goes on first to make a case of the limitations that a safer offers. And he essentially states three major limitations. For the record, this is not meant to negate the learning is for him. Obviously, all of Tehra is about learning. But when you compare it to personal advice from, obviously, a Tehra person, it has some limits. We've learned so far two of them, and we're going to go into the third one in a moment. So what did we discuss last week? The first limit, in the words of the Alter Rebbe, I'll, I'll read them in the translated English, is the first thing is that when a reader, reading in Sifre, in po- books of piety, Sifre Yire, looking for advice and guidance, the reader reads after his own manner and mind, and according to his mental grasp and comprehension of that particular time. Being that human beings are not static creatures, we go through shifts, and everyone has their approach, so everyone has their manner and mind, and according to his mental grasp. So that immediately tells you that that sefer, as good as it is, the limit, there's a limitation because each reader is different. Hence, the Alter Rebbe continues, if his intelligence and mind are confused and wander about in darkness, in serving God, in Avedus Hashem, he finds difficult in seeing the beneficial light that is concealed in books, even though the light is pleasant to the eyes and brings healing to the soul. So the chsarn, as in the words of Allah in the Gavra, the individual who may be in a state of confusion will not be able to take out of the book, out of the Sefer, that which he needs to take out. That's the first issue, the point of view of the reader. On the other hand, if he goes into a personal audience, so the mentor, knowing the person's situation, will be able to address him and deal with this, even if he's confused. He's going to address his confusion. Apart from this, says the Alter Rebbe, point number two. And here, he distinguishes between two types of svarim. Books of piety that are based and stem from human intelligence, obviously based on Tehra. But it's still, it is human intelligence that the ideas are coming from, 
certainly do not have the same appeal for all people. Precisely because it's written by an intelligent person and different people, like he says, not all intellects and minds are alike. And he cites the Gemara in Baruchis, Daf Nun Ches 58a, that talks exactly about that. That different people have different temperaments and different perspectives. And therefore, as good as the book may be, the book cannot be equal for everyone. So now it's not about the person. Even if you had clarity and were not confused, still, everybody has a different perspective. And then he brings from Ramban, from Muhammad Hashem, which is a commentary of the Ramban on the Rif, in the Gemara and Brachis, 58b, where it continues and speaks about an actually an event where a certain Amoira said that he wants to make this bracha on two individuals, Rab Papa and Rab Huna. Because there are individuals, like the Ramban brings from Yeshua, from the Sifri, that are able to contain and speak to different type of perspectives. But that's a unique thing that comes from God's power, from Ruach Hashem. Like the Pasuk says about Yeshua, the language is, Isha Sheruach boy. He has the Spirit of God in him. And therefore, since God created people of different perspectives, he's able to achieve that. And the Ramban brings that there was a unique situation in the Gemara there, that there are certain individuals who were able to achieve that same thing. As I mentioned, when you're talking about Rav Popper and Rav Huna. But it shouldn't be used, make the bracha, Chacham Arazim should not be made on other individuals. In other words, it's a unique exception. What do we derive from this? That not every individual can do this. And it cannot be captured in a book. Even the unique individuals, it's an individual, Yeshua. Or in the case of Rapapa and Rabhuna. But everyone else not. So therefore, a book that's based on Seichel, not on Ruach, on Isha Sheruach Boy, meaning on a divine intelligence, therefore is not equal to everyone and cannot speak to everyone equally because people have different perspectives. So that's limitation number two. Now the Alter Rebbe continues, and now we'll learn inside because this is where we stopped, continuing the so-called limits that we find in Svarim, which of course is going to make the case that there's nothing compares to personal advice when you have a mentor, a Yisha a, Lekim, a, 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 a person who has divine inspiration that you're speaking to personally. So now he goes to the third limitation. What's the third limitation? Now he goes to other types of Svarim. Till now we were speaking about Svarim based on human intelligence. Then he goes on and says, Elafil the Besifre Ayira. Asher you say dosim b'hadri kedesh. But even the books on piety, whose basis is in the peaks of holiness, in other words, as he says, that it's based on medroshi chazal asher ruach Hashem dibur bam umilose el shenom medroshim of our sages of blessed memory, through whom the spirit of God speaks, and His word, the God's, the divine word, is on their tongue. So now we're not dealing with human intelligence. We're talking about Teda. And Teda is a channel of the divine. So based on that, we're not dealing with the limitation that you would say about in books based on human intelligence which cannot be equal to all. And the Arab Rebbe adds even further, the Teda and God and the Holy One are one and the same. So now we're talking about a godly intelligence. In other words, the godly intelligence that was given to Yeshua, that is able to, as the Loshan Chazal goes, that, about Yeshua, that that unique situation, because now we're not talking about human intelligence. We're talking about Sfarim, books of piety that are based on, based on Chazal. And the Alter Rebbe goes further. And all the 600,000 souls, 
general souls of Israel. Because remember, there's a lot more than 600,000 Jews. So that's why we say there's 600,000 Shomas Kalolius. Uprotehem. And their individual offshoots. Think of these cells as general souls. And then they branch off. Each one branches off, which accounts for the fact there are many more than just 600,000. Down to, he continues, Uprote Protehem. In other words, they're general souls of Israel with their individual offshoots, and then the offshoots of offshoots, branches of branches. Ad nitzutz kal shebekalim upchuse erech shabameinu bnei Yisrael, down to the spark in even the lowliest and the least estimable members of the Jewish people, of the children of Israel. So in other words, these 600,000 which break down into all the specific detailed souls, no matter who they are, even people who don't have any scholarship or piety. Kula miskashram baraisa. They are thus bound up with Tera. Because remember, Yisrael Zosha Tevis, Yes Shishim Ribi Eishis Lutera, every Neshama and the, and the branches of the Neshama and the breakdown, the offshoots, are all rooted in Tera. Varaisi hi em a kashera seisun la kodesh baruchu, kenede bezeira kedesh. And the Tera binds them to God, the Holy One, kodesh baruchu. As it's stated in the Holy Zehar. So here we have that what's happening now. These Sifre Piety, these Sifre Yira, these books of piety are based on Tera, which is one with the Ebishter, and which transmits that energy into every soul, no matter who it may be. So based on that, that this is now the word of God, how does it, so you would say that theoretically, then based on this, such books should be able to speak to everyone. Not as the, in, by, in contrast to the books based on human intelligence, which can't speak equally to everyone. In addition, what he said earlier, that also the, the shortcoming of the fact that human beings may not be in a place where they can appreciate it. So the first two flaws that we spoke about, so-called flaws, the first two shortcomings, the first two challenges, here seemingly regarding books of piety that are mamish teda, which address everybody, down to the Smallest soul, so to speak, this should resolve the issue. Nevertheless, says the Alter Rebbe, had is that there are the clawless Israel. So it's true that Tera, and therefore books of piety based on Tera, and my Chazal, do speak to every individual and give guidance in Avedus Hashem, but the Alter Rebbe says, however, this bond pertains only in a general way to the community of Israel as a whole. In other words, it doesn't speak specifically to each individual. The Tater speaking to the whole body, the whole community of the Jewish people. But then the Alter Rebbe qualifies. One second. We know the Tater doesn't remain a general statement. We always learn that the Tater is a directive for each individual. So he continues. Although the Torah was given to be interpreted in general and in particular down to the minutest detail, that's the whole purpose of Torah, not to remain a general statement, but each person should be able to derive it in the minutest detail, as he says here, to every specific to each individual, which is rooted in the Torah. So that makes et, the Torah pertain to each individual. To every individual that's rooted in the Torah, as we said. So now, back to the same question. So it's not just in general, it's also to specific. But here the Alter Rebbe qualifies, yeah, but there's still something missing. Hari ain't kol odom Problem is that, n- nevertheless, not every person is privileged to recognize his individual place in the Torah. So when we say, every person has their chilek in the Torah, because the life of a neshama and every soul 
is rooted in the Teda, as I said, yes, shishim ribi oisus le Teda. Every, the letter of a Teda, every Jew is rooted in a letter that's specifically to him. But not everyone merits to be able to identify this specific place in the Teda. That you need a special merit. And therefore, even though, so now when we're talking about Sifri Yireh, books of piety, that are based on Teda, that are based on Memor Chazam, you saw them, they're founded on the Hadari Kedush, not just on human intelligence inspired by, by Teda, but actually based on Teda, nevertheless, the same limitation, that a person cannot necessarily find his particular part of Teda that relates to him and his particular Avedis Hashem. So we therefore have the limitation that even these Svarim also are not comparable to someone going in and speaking to his Rebbe, to his rabbi, to his mentor, for guidance. Okay. So now the Alter Rebbe has covered all the bases. First, the limitation of a human being. We all have limits when we're looking for guidance, especially when we're in a state of confusion. Number two, the books that are written based on human intelligence can't speak to everyone equally. And number three, the books of Teda that do speak to everyone equally are firstly in general terms and even the specifics, not each of us are merit, we need a special merit to be able to derive from that our personal lessons. So when you're struggling with a particular issue, let's say a person is having shalom bias issues or a person is having personal demons that are bothering them, fears, inhibitions, depression, anger, jealousy, Challenges and distraction, I can't daven properly. You name it. We all have our challenges. So of course the Teda has an answer. So what are you going to do? You're going to open up a Teda. Teda Shebiksav and Teda Shebalpeh. And are you, are you going to able to find in it a personal directive to you? You may. But not everybody merits to be able to find that. And even if you find once or twice, in general, can you turn to the Teda for that type of personalized guidance. We're not talking now about halacha, which we'll discuss in a moment. Where there you could say, it's easier to find. But even that, we'll soon see, it's also not that simple. But on a personal Avedis Hashem, even the Sifrei Yira that are, you saw them, you say, Dosen Bahad Kedesh, we know that, we can't, we see, look, look at my Sadaf, but Pe'el Mamish. In actuality, it's extremely difficult. So therefore, comes to the question, al Rebbe is writing a Sefer Atanya, so the Anash, the questions that people have, we want to hear you, we want to speak to you, because you can speak to us personally, and give us directives, and tell us how to derive from Teda our personal guidance. But the books alone are limited. Not that the books, Chaz Shalom are limited. Obviously, we say, Im Reiku Mikemhu. The Teda has everything in it. Hafochba, Vafochba. You turn the page, leaf a page, turn the pages, you'll find your answers. But the issue is us, how are we going to receive it? Firstly, it's the limit, due to the limit of our own confusion. And secondly, the Torah itself, not everybody merits to be able to derive the personal guidance. And definitely the books that are based on human intelligence, where there you could say it relates more to us because it's coming from human intelligence, not just, so to speak, heavenly words. But there, as we said clearly, ain't they saying Shavas, people have different perspectives. And you can't speak to all people equally. So these limitations are now in place. So then what is the Tanya going to achieve? So al is building up a case, so to speak, against, or you should say, we should say the limits of a book as opposed to personal guidance. Now the al is going to continue and strengthen the case why from Teda alone, though it's Teda min HaShemayim and from heaven, from heaven, still... There's a limit of how, whether we are able to derive specific direct guidance in our Aveda Sashem. So he's going to go now strengthen it by, by, by that, even though the Torah encompasses directives to every Jew, both in general and specifically as we mentioned, as we discussed. Nevertheless, there's a challenge involved. And he's going to bring this beginning with halacha itself. Not just Primius HaTeda, 
which is more addressing each individual's service of God. Halacha. In halacha, we also have an issue that even though it's equal for everybody, halacha and teda is not just for an individual. It's not like human intelligence that fits one and not the other. It's for everybody. And nevertheless, we find distinctions between different Jews. So here the Alter Rebbe says the following. And now... Av ba'alochis, av rather, av bihilchis yisavaheter. Even in the case of the laws governing things prohibited and permitted, that's yisavaheter haniglas lanu lemenu, which have been revealed to us and to our children, which means nigla de teira. That's nigla. So we're talking about the part of teira that's obvious and easier to access. Halacha. Halachas are what is right and what is wrong. Niglas lanu v'neinu. Motsonu re'inu machlekes tanoim v'amaroim min akotza lakotza mamish. We find and witness differences of opinion among tanoim and amaroim from one extreme to the other. So in other words, it's not a black and white thing. The halacha that just says this is what you do, this is what you don't do. You find disagreements. And from one extreme to the other. One Tana will say it's allowed, another one will say it's permitted, it's prohibited, or vice versa. Extreme different opinions. Even though it's one Tata, and it's a Tata that is equal to all of us. The Elu the Elu Divirel Kim Chaim continues the Altareb. And yet these as well as these are the words of the living God. They're all words of the living God. That even though they be different opinions, but they're based on Teda, which is a day amitis, and halacha take, when it comes to an actual actionable law, you can't do two things. Shammai says, for example, something's per- prohibited. Hillel says it's permitted, and the halacha is that it's permitted. Halacha can't be both ways. But their theories and how they derive their logic is Elu Ve'el Divele Kim Chaim. Both of them is based on and is the words of the living God. And the expression is Ali Kim Chaim Loshen Rabim. It's stated in the plural. The plural is, is used as a reference to the source of life. So he says, why is the plural used? Al Shem Moker Achaim the Neshama Yisrael. Why is it used? Because since the Torah is the root, of all the souls. And the souls are different, even though they're all rooted in one place. But they all branch out into different types of souls, as we know. So even though God's essence is one, and the neshamas that are rooted from, all come from one place, but then, on the level of revelation, they all branch off into distinct different types of souls. Which break down as he continues now. These souls break down in general to three different branches or categories. Yemin, Vesmail, Vemtsa, right, left, and center. Shem Chesed, Vagvura, Vachulu, which are namely kindness, Chesed, might, or strength, Gvura, and so on. The third, of course, is Tiferes. So since the souls break into branches, in some places it actually talks about seven branches of Neshamas, corresponding to the seven branches of the Meneda. We see it also, for example, when you look at the Shvatim, there's 12 different Shvatim. They all originate from Yaakov. And all the way back to Yitzchak and Avram, all the way to Adam and Chav. And yet they branch off. We know Avram is Chesed, Yitzchak is Gevurah, Yaakov is Teferis. So the souls have primary types of personalities or function or archetypes, if you wish. So as such, and since they're rooted in Teira, that's why the Teira is Elikim Chaim in the plural. The Shamas that are rooted in the, in the attribute of kindness are likewise inclined towards kindness, 
and leniency, lahokel, leniency kenoida as it's known. So what do we see from this? That even though it's nigla and it's halacha, and halacha seems to be a very clear path, a revealed path, and yet there's still distinctions because you have souls of different levels and therefore you have different tanoim and different scholars as they describe each one in a different way. And that's why you have the different opinions in Teda. So even in Halacha we see that the Teda that was given to all Jews branches off into different approaches. And as we said, not everybody knows how to find their particular personal path. Now he's going to continue and say, When it comes to Nistaris Lashem Elekeinu. That there, even more so, is difficult, increasingly difficult to find our particular path. And this is going to strengthen the point that the Sefer, even though it's based Mamish Teda, nevertheless, is still a challenge for how we derive our particular path and guidance in morality and spirituality in serving God. So we will stop here. And Mitzvah Hashem, next week we'll continue. And then, of course, come away with a real punchline. So then, after all these challenges, one has to, the drama has built up. Now, what happens next? So what is the Alter Rebbe going to do that has not been done till now? And that will teach us the power of Tanya in unbelievable ways, how it personalizes and relates to each one of us. Which, of course, is the whole foundation of why Tanya is so important to learn, because it's going to resolve and bring together the best of all worlds. So with that, we stop here. Only a pause. Everyone have a very good Tavach and be well. And we will see each other again next week. This has been My Life, Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson. Please join us again next week. Visit chasidasapplied.com for archived classes and more resources.